were saying that one of the things we wanted to do with this uh, conference was to, to kind of um, melt together or bring together so many different aspects of, of, of uh, Italian-American culture, Italian-American life. And part of that, as we've been talking about uh, Xavier, uh, uh, St. Francis Cabrini, uh, and um, Scalabrinians and Servites, was to just talk about the experience of uh, being an Italian-American uh, vocation uh, and how much maybe the Italian-American sensibility played into that. And so we've asked um, uh, three uh, priests uh, who were Chicago-born, um, or at least probably yeah, Chicago-born, uh, to give a little bit of their experience, I want to make sure, give uh, a little bit of their experience of how these three things came together. I've asked each of them to talk for about 15 minutes, then we'll allow for a little bit of conversation as well. Okay, and yeah, I think we're going to start with... Uh, Buonasera a tutti. That's good enough for Pope Francis, it's good enough for us. Uh, my name is Father John Balmonte, I'm a Jesuit priest. Uh, I am very happy to be part of this uh, sort of joke uh, with a Jesuit, an Augustinian, and a diocesan priest. But thankfully we didn't go into a bar. Uh, it's still time. Maybe that'll happen later. There you go. It is a, a delight to be with you. As I mentioned, I'm a, a Jesuit priest. I was born in Chicago uh, to an Italian-American family, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, joined the Jesuits. I am presently the superintendent of Catholic schools in the Joliet Diocese. So uh, I live out in uh, Joliet and then kind of travel around the diocese uh, supervising the schools. I help at uh, Our Lady of Pompeii, so it's good to see some people from uh, Pompeii, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, what I'd like to do is, uh, is take you to a couple masses that I have said, and sort of uh, start there and then work my way back to, uh, to here. And so the first mass that I would like to talk about, uh, I said on June 29th, 1996. And then the second mass that I'd like to talk about, I said on, um, let's see, I said on August 8th, 2010. Okay, and I want to kind of work back through both of those. The first Mass uh, takes us to Chalamberto, Italy. And Chalamberto is a very small town in the <laughs> Provincia di Torino. Uh, so north of Turin, about 10 kilometers from the border with France, in what's called Valle di Lanzo. And that is basically a forgotten valley in between Val d'Osta which is very famous, and Val Souza, which would be well known by Italians uh, living there because it's a vacation hotspot. And so in this forgotten corner of Italy, uh, where probably even Hannibal himself passed by, you find the beautiful Alpine mountains. You can find in the summer uh, terrific and beautiful um, flowers, a lot of sunshine. You can find vacationers up in uh, Chiamberto. And in the winter, you find snow and cold, and then you find more snow, uh, and, and, and on top of that, some more cold in the winter. There are about 350 people who live in Calumberto, including my cousins. Uh, Antonio, who just, uh, who just died last January, his wife, Caterina, their children, Angelo and Laura. Uh, Angelo's wife, Silvana, and their children, and then other cousins like Maria, Modestino, and, and her family. Uh, my first cousin uh, was Angela Chiarigione, who I got to meet when I was there. And uh, her sons are Aldo, Aldo and Vittorio. Aldo is uh, someone who's distinguished himself as a mountaineer and an outdoorsman. He was the curator of the local nature museum, and this summer he was a candidate for consigliere uh, to the syndico, to the mayor of uh, Calamberto. And so that is, uh, that's a little bit of the scene and the context, and what this is is the third mass that I said as a priest, I said in the church in this small town. Uh, because after my ordination here in the States, I went back to Italy uh, to go to some first masses of friends and then went to uh, this uh, small town where my great-grandmother was born and I said mass there in the 500-year-old church, which is the church of Giacomo e Filippo, uh, the apostles. 
Uh, and what it did was, on top of concluding what, um, at least genealogically, would be a 274-year odyssey that I uh, was able to uh, uncover, it also marked my first miracle as a priest. Um, and I suppose this can go into my hagiography or something. But anyway, after the first, after this mass in this small town in this 500-year-old church, uh, one of the women in the uh, village who I became friends with, who was just a great uh, person, came up to me and she said, Complimenti Padre, uh, you have on your first miracle as a priest, she wanted to give you my compliments. And I said, oh, I'm my first miracle as a priest, what do you mean? And she said, um, well, you, you, you were able to do, perform your first miracle as a priest as a result of this first mass. And I said, Madalena, what do you what do you mean, first miracle? And she said, Well, your cousin Antonio was at mass, and that's the first. My book that counts as a miracle. <laughs> well, when I told my cousin Antonio about that, he he didn't think that was very funny. <laughs> In fact, he had kind of an interesting uh, spiritual life himself. He didn't actually go to Sunday mass, so I got him to go to Sunday mass, um, or his wife probably did. Um, but uh, he would go exclusively to funerals in that town, which meant that he went more than once to Mass during the week because there was a lot of elderly people. And so he, out of devotion and respect to, uh, to the dead, he went to uh, all those uh, funeral Masses. And so, you know, God bless him. Now, he didn't go to Sunday Mass, so uh, we know, of course, that mortal sin he should be going to Sunday Mass, but nevertheless. Um, and so uh, I had done genealogical research in this town and discovered my fifth great-grandfather, Pietro Gagliardi, was baptized in the church where I had the privilege to say Mass in 1722. I wasn't able to go all the way back to 1586, which was where the parish registers finished, uh, because the uh, parish priest there was rather grumpy and wouldn't allow me to look at the registers more than a couple days, and so I had to interrupt my research. Um, but what I discovered was my bisnonna, Paulina was born and baptized in that town and in that church, and she was the first one really to ever leave the Valley, Valley di Lanzo. She left with her sister. They went to um, uh, upper the upper peninsula of Michigan in a town called Nagani, where they joined with other uh, Italian, northern Italians as uh, iron miners, uh, and she was a seamstress. Um, my cousins who were there and still live there found it hard to believe that I would come back to find them because it took me uh, three trains and one bus ride and then a 20 minute walk into the town to get there. Um, and, and frankly, my cousin Antonio didn't even like to leave the town. So the idea that my these Nona would leave uh, more than 100 years before and I would come back and find them and actually say mass in their church was astounding to them. Uh, but it was well worth it. And so what I'd say is the faith that I found there, which uh, becomes part of my vocation story, uh, was a simple faith, but what was decidedly Catholic. Uh, I met and became friends with a great priest named Don Biagio Lozero, who was 87 years old. He would march around the town in his cassock. He would drive his miniature Fiat 500, where he was a menace to all on the roads. <laughs> And he gave me his 50th um, anniversary card from his ordination as a gift, uh, as a sign of friendship, and it's something that I've kept in my bravery ever since. And so I, I, I got to know these people. I participated in the parish festival in this town, and I went to the mountains to visit the shrines, and one of the, the most famous shrines in the area is in a place called Forno Alpigrai. Again, it would be just on the border with France. I ascended the 444 stairs that the pilgrims, uh, at, out of their own devotion and, and penance, would ascend on their knees. I decided to go on my feet instead because I'm a wimpy Jesuit instead of uh, tough like that among people. And this uh, uh, sanctuary was something that was uh, founded in 1629 uh, and was part of an apparition of the Blessed Mother to someone named Pietro Garino. Uh, and then what became a place of uh, pilgrimage and sanctuary for the entire area. I mention only because uh, for those of us who have been back to uh, Italy and have done these sorts of uh, researches and so forth, we know the just incredible wealth of, of faith and richness that's part of that country and part of our heritage. 
And it truly is overwhelming just mentioning this kind of sliver of faith that I was able to um, recover, in a sense, for myself and for my family, uh, that it just kind of goes on and on. So I'm sure all of you could add uh, your own stories of, uh, of faith that comes from your hometowns and from uh, your family, uh, which is truly humbling. Uh, and so you have my uh, Vis Nona Paulina, who uh, actually was married twice, uh, something a bit scandalous for the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, her husband died uh, of the um, influenza in 1914, and then she remarried, uh, and she actually left her husband uh, because he did not treat her well. Uh, and for that, she uh, stepped outside of the Catholic Church for a while, uh, still raised the children in the Catholic Church, which is why I stand before you today as a priest. Um, but she was a seamstress. Uh, they made enough money, moved down to Chicago, uh, and she gave my, uh, my grandmother, my nonna, the name Lucia, yeah. because she was born on, hard to guess, December 13th, right? And uh, they spent time at Assumption Church, uh, and then eventually, when my grandmother married my grandfather, they moved to uh, the Basilica of Our Lady of Sorrows. And so that's a bit of one side of the family, just to share with you the other side has to do with August 8, 2010, uh, when I had the privilege of saying Mass out in Stone Park, or as we say in Calabria, Stone Parque. <laughs> you have been in Calabria, right? Stone Parque. So, uh, so my friend Joe Bruno, who's going to speak tomorrow, and we'll talk about the Società di San Francesco di Paola, uh, he asked me to say Mass at uh, the Festa della Famiglia. Some of you may have uh, had the uh, uh, joy of attending that. It's a great Mass with about 2,000 people and then all kinds of sorpresata that you eat afterwards. Uh, and that, for me, is the conclusion of an, uh, another odyssey that uh, it has to do with my vis nonno, Agostino. Now, he was uh, named Agostino because he was born on the 15th of August, which, of course, is the Feast of the Assumption. And so the connection back to my faith, our faith, is also to remember when people remembered the liturgical calendar and then honored the saints and the Blessed Mother uh, by names uh, given to them out of the liturgical calendar, which I think is important. So he was born in Rende, Provincia di Cosenza. And so my family brings uh, together, as I like to say, the knee and the boot of Italy. And so uh, he, he left Calabria in about 1890 with his brother Antonio. Uh, they lived on Forker Street for a while, uh, which is now really probably just uh, the Dan Ryan over there. Uh, he married uh, a Napolitana named Auriemma, uh, a, decision, a decision from which my family has never recovered, of course. <laughs> so you have this Calabrese marrying a Napolitana, which of course is a mixed marriage, as we know. And then they gave birth to my nonno, Giuseppe Carlo, uh, who was an altar boy at Notre Dame Parish here in uh, on the west side, uh, and so what a nice Italian boy was doing serving Mass at a French church is something that I've never been able to understand to this day. But he evidently liked blondes, and so he went to the, uh, the Italian community up in, uh, near Superior Street, and he found my, uh, my grandmother, uh, who of course is the northern side, and she was blonde, uh, and they uh, married, and eventually, as I said, moved to Our Lady of Sorrows, where my father was born. My father then married my mother, and out to the suburbs only after he likes to tell, making sure that there was a beef stand within a two mile radius. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the Calabrese side, I visited Calabria many times and, uh, and have um, really come to appreciate uh, the beauty of the faith there as well. I did genealogical research, and it's worth noting, different from my genealogical research in northern Italy, the genealogical research in Calabria, I will say, required me to lie cheap in a certain sense, steal, in order to get the information I needed. Uh, what I found there was a beautiful faith uh, in, uh, in southern Italy. I met uh, incredible priests, uh, some of whom are friends of mine to this day and people who I respect and admire. Uh, Padre Pino Stancari is a Jesuit who's in Calabria who has uh, an incredible mission there. I got to know Don Raimondo, Raimondo Verducci, who uh, was the parish priest in a town called San Lucido, who I became friends with. Uh, I visited the Santuario di San Francesco di Paola, the great place of the sanctuary of St. Francis of Paola. Um, and all of these things were, for me, a reminder of the history of the gospel. 
and the importance of the history of the gospel for Italy, certainly, uh, and the people who brought the gospel there first, the gospel that all of us read and have been converted by, but also the history of the gospel in Chicago and how the gospel was brought really by a Jesuit, by Father Marquette, just a little uh, propaganda here, um, over at 26 in Damon, and so, uh, and how that gospel has come to us through our uh, grandparents, great-grandparents, or great-great-great-grandparents. And so I just simply say, in terms of vocation and vocation story, offer you this one biblical passage, which I find quite simple and beautiful, and that is from Mark 3.14 where uh, it says, he appointed 12 that they might be with him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. And that I would simply offer to you as the most simple and eloquent definition we have for our Christian faith, that we are called to be with him, that he might send us out to preach, it says, according to uh, the apostolic tradition. And so in a certain sense, my family, the, my bisnomni, uh, all these people that uh, have gone before me in the faith, these two sacred places, these places that I hold sacred in, in, uh, in my own uh, vocation story, are ways of being with Christ, being with Christ and his people and his sacraments and his word. Um, and so my vocation story itself is, I would say, pretty ordinary, in some ways kind of boring, so I'm, I'm I'm more interested in talking about my uh, my great my grandparents and my great grandparents because I lived a, a pretty simple parish life out in suburban Chicago, or lived in Wayside. Uh, my faith was awakened in college, uh, in uh, some classes at uh, Marquette University. Uh, I admired the Jesuits there, and so I decided to join the Jesuits. In a moment of weakness, they allowed me to enter the order. Uh, I dedicated my life to education and to uh, teaching young people about Christ, so that they might have an experience of Christ. Uh, and that simply really is it. Uh, the other part that I would add to this vocation story, which is a beautiful gift to me from my family and also from uh, the church, is the service that I've been able to uh, render to the Italian community here in Chicago and also in Milwaukee. I have been for the last 12 years, the, uh, uh, I've been able to say Mass at Our Lady of Pompeii on the west side to connect to, to my family and also to serve the Italian community there, to the American community there. I've been uh, chaplain to the Società di Santissimo Crucifisso, a group of uh, Sicilians here in town. Uh, I've also helped out with the Società di Beato Giovanni Riccio, another group of uh, Sicilians, uh, Santa Fara, another group of Sicilians. Uh, I've said uh, weddings and masses and uh, funerals and all sorts of different uh, anniversaries and everything for Italians and Italian Americans here in Chicago and in Milwaukee uh, where, I was, uh, where I was working. And for all of that for me has been a beautiful experience of the call that Christ gives to each one of us to be with him. And so uh, my story, my story of, uh, of Italian faith, of Italian American faith is really simply that. And for that I'm uh, most grateful, most grateful to uh, my family who have uh, shared the faith with me, and then also to uh, the church and God's people who have allowed me to, uh, to serve in this way. So uh, those will be my remarks, and uh, I'll leave the microphone to someone else. Thank you very much.